might be salutations. There's a video I posted a few weeks ago where I talked about the Ulta Black Widow makeup collection because I love Black Widow and I love makeup and I was rather frustrated by some of the decisions that were made there. And Ulta keeps on being given brand collaboration opportunities, I guess, so they've come out with the Harry Potter collection now. And I mean, I, I kind of love Harry Potter too, it was a big part of my childhood. So go grab a snack or something because this is probably going to be a long one. I've seen a picture of what looks like a pygmy puff something, some sort of mysterious pink substance in a little jar. And Ulta also had a Slytherin makeup bag shown in a promotional email that they sent out. But neither of those things are showing up on their website, so I don't know if the pygmy puff thing is a jelly blush or a lip mask or what. And presumably there would be bags for the other houses too, but we haven't seen those. And I don't know what price they would be or if they're even gonna be sold. I don't know what's going on there. Um, the Pygmy Puff thing looks pretty cute, whatever it is, and the bag is fine, just a little bit plain, and I'm not sure why pride was one of the three words they chose instead of determination or leadership or resourcefulness, but I mean, I guess pride still works. If the Pygmy Puff mystery thing or the bags show up on the website between the time that I'm recording this and the time that this video goes up, then I'll put in an edit or something so that you can see what we learn. It turns out there is not only the jelly blush, but also hair scrunchies and ribbons and liquid shimmer drops and bath bombs and nail stickers and face masks with Quidditch things on them and a lotion for each of the houses. Wow. Let's start talking about products we actually know about now. So this first one is going to be quick, I'm just getting it out of the way. It's the Bewitching PH Lip Balm, which is $10. These magical transforming lip balms always claim that they'll become the perfect color for your individual lips, but they end up being a bright pink every time. I don't know of anybody who actually enjoys using these, and they were interesting a couple years ago when they were relatively new, but I think at this point everyone's just kind of tired of seeing these happening and no one is impressed by them, so this really didn't need to exist. There are four lip crayons that are also $10 each in shades Amartentia, Expecto Patronum, Hogwarts Letters, and Order of the Phoenix. I will say they've definitely improved their ability to find shade names that are actually relevant to the franchise since their Marvel collaborations when they were just kind of throwing in generic hero words. Although I really think Emertentia would have been better used as a blush shade because it's a love potion and blushing, like that would have been really cute. Or they could have made it a lip gloss shade and made it like a mother of pearl kind of iridescent thing like what the book says the potion looks like, but instead they made it a mauve pink lip crayon, so oh well. Um, and I'm not sure if they wanted the Hogwarts letter shade to look like the wax seal on Hogwarts letters, but if they did, they didn't really succeed at that. So they might have just been kind of throwing in random shades and words together, but oh well. Um, each crayon has a cute little picture on it that matches the name of the shade, which I think is adorable. I really love that. Um, it's pretty subtle, at least based on the pictures we can see on their website, since it's white and the crayons are kind of a gold tube. But, I mean, it's a nice touch. Good job, Ulta. There are four lip glosses for this collection that are also $10 each. The shades are Hedwig, Howler, Platform 9 3 quarters, and Spectra Specs. So right away, I noticed that Howler is for some reason not a red shade, even though Howlers are red. <laughs> and I think it would have made a lot more sense for Platform 9 3 quarters to be more of a brick sort of a color instead of a peach beige. Just a thought. I do really appreciate that Hedwig and Spectra Specs got fitting shades because Hedwig has like a clear, sparkly, silvery kind of look that fits a snowy owl, and the Spectra Specs color is a lot like the color of the actual glasses from the movie. So two out of four, good job, I guess. But why did you miss such obvious color options? Like howlers are red, just make the gloss red too. <sighs> Darn it, Ulta. <laughs> So like the lip crayons, each of the gloss tubes has a little picture on the tube of the shade name, basically, which is adorable and I really like that they did that for both of these things, and I think the glosses are probably my favorite part of this collection, weird color choices aside. There's one more thing to talk about before we get to the house palettes, and that would be the brush set. For $25, you get four brushes named Deathly Hallows, The Cloak, The Stone, and The Wand. This confuses me because the Cloak, Stone, and Wand make up the Deathly Hallows as a trio, so having a fourth brush named Deathly Hallows doesn't really make sense. And my husband, when I was talking to him about this, said that if they wanted to have a Deathly Hallows brush, they should have found a way for the Cloak, Stone, and Wand brushes to like merge together into one big mega brush, which I don't think is really a thing. <laughs> 
Um, but then he suggested that if they wanted to name something after the Deathly Hallows, they should have made a brush named the wand, and a makeup eraser cloth named the cloak, and a compact mirror named the stone. Ulta, if my husband, who doesn't really care about makeup, has better ideas than you do, perhaps you should hire, like, a consultant or something to make your collaborations more reasonable. Please. We're open to this. We will help you. Just please stop being weird. And now for the part of the video that's going to take the most time, those palettes. <laughs> Individually, they're $16 and you can buy the set for $50. I think when I first looked at this, the set was $55, but it's $50 now, so I don't know if I just wrote it down wrong the first time or if they decreased the price, but it's $50 apparently. I do like the designs they put on the outer packaging and the little sparkle designs on the insides, but that's about all I really like about these. Uh, I'll try to keep this part organized so I'm not just jumping around and rambling about things that annoy me, but this is going to take a while. Staying on the subject of the outer packaging for a brief while, why is Hufflepuff's design printed in white? It's impossible to see and their house colors are literally yellow and black, so why not use black and make the design visible? <laughs> Gryffindor's design is printed in gold because their colors are red and gold. Logic. Slytherin and Ravenclaw both have a whitish silver kind of thing going on, as far as I can tell, and the movies did make Ravenclaw's secondary color silver, even though the books say it's supposed to be bronze, but I'm over it, mostly. But Hufflepuff, for some reason, got yellow packaging with a white print that we can't even see. It makes no sense if the other houses all got their designs printed in their accent color, then why did Hufflepuff get bullied like this? Dang it, Elta. Hufflepuff deserves better. There's something else that's bizarre here. On Ulta's website, at the time that I'm recording this, the description for the Slytherin palette lists nine shades that are not the nine shades that are in the palette picture. And I have no idea what happened there, but it seems that they came up with nine shades that fit Slytherin very well, threw them out, and then went with other ones instead. <laughs> so originally, those shade names were resourceful, ambitious, determined, realistic, driven, innovative, perfection, bold, and charming. Those names fit Slytherin, and I don't know why they got rid of them. Because the names they went with are Pebble, Fluffy, Moon, Barren, Herb, Elm, Ivy, Toad, and Black Lake. Now, Black Lake fits because the Slytherin common room is under the Black Lake, and because brands will look for any excuse to put a matte black in their palettes. Toad kind of works because it's a green thing associated with Hogwarts, but as far as I remember, we don't know of any specific Slytherin kids who had a toad, but one of them probably did, so you know what, fine, I'll let it slide. There are much worse names here. <laughs> so Baron would make sense because of the Bloody Baron, except they spelled it wrong. The Bloody Baron has one R in his name, and this Baron has two. So they either named this shade after Trump's son, or they just didn't spell check before they printed their palette somehow. <sighs> And wouldn't it have made more sense for a shade named for the Bloody Baron to either be a blood red, because the dude's covered in blood, or a like, silvery, ghostly gray shade? Just saying. Um, maybe the like rusty brown shade they went with is meant to be the color of dried blood? Or they could have just gone, hmm, shade name, color, bam, and not paid attention to if it was relevant or not, which I'm guessing is what happened there. <sighs> Fluffy and Moon are words that are relevant to Harry Potter, although not particularly connected to Slytherin, and Herb, Elm, and Ivy are vaguely magic adjacent, but the only thing really making any connection here is that Ivy is green and so is Slytherin, so there's really no reason for those three names to be here. And the last shade is that boring matte beige up in the top left that most of us probably already have a couple of in other palettes, and it's named Pebble. So I tried to figure out why in the world they would have chosen Pebble as a shade name, and the only thing I could think of that was remotely relevant is that one of the cats who played Mrs. Norris was named Pebbles. So did they name that shade after a Maine Coon, or did they just throw in a word that has no connection to Harry Potter? Because either way, I have so many questions. <laughs> and get ready to see that boring beige again in all three of the other palettes, by the way. Yay! Alright, Ravenclaw's turn. Once again, many of the names are at least significant in the overall Harry Potter story, although none of them are particularly connected to Ravenclaw. There is Natural, Fang, Bobatons, Hedwig, Pigwidgeon, Ghost, Bark, Pixie, and Twilight. So why are Harry and Ron's owls and Hagrid's dog 
shade names in the Ravenclaw palette. And why is Pigwidge in a brown shade when the book says the Pigwidge in is gray? Just right off the bat, there's three names that make absolutely no sense and I don't understand. The Beaubaton's shade is pretty much the same color as the Beaubaton's uniform, which is good, but I'm pretty sure that the Beaubaton's uniform being blue is the only reason it's here because the Beaubaton's visitors sat with the Ravenclaws during the Triwizard Tournament and that's the only connection besides the blue thing. And another blue shade that got used here is Pixie, which, I mean, it's the same color as the Pixies that Lockhart unleashed on his students, and Lockhart was somehow a Ravenclaw, but that's where the connection stops. So again, I'm guessing they just thought, oh, that's a blue thing, let's put it in the Ravenclaw palette. And Bark is straight up just a random brown, because apparently every palette needs at least one brown, so that doesn't make sense either. And of course, there's that matte beige again in the top left, and this time it's called Natural. So that's a weird choice, because the name isn't referencing Harry Potter as far as I can tell, and that kind of means that it's just describing the color, which implies Ulta thinks that that's approximately the color of skin by default, and that's a pretty big yikes for me. <laughs> um, I really wish that brands would just stop putting matte beiges in so many of their palettes, just because like beauty influencers complain when they're not there, because for one thing, not everybody can use those shades to blend out their shadows if it doesn't match their skin tone, and those of us that do somewhat match it can, you know, buy a single shadow so that we can just use that with all our palettes to blend things out. I used this with my green shadows today to do some blending, and it wasn't that hard. And honestly, having a shade like that and calling it something like natural or nude or whatever basically sends a message to customers that this palette is made for white people. So. That's icky. Please don't do that. <laughs> People of all skin tones use makeup and nobody should feel like an afterthought. Just, I had to say that because it just really irks me when like a foundation or something like this is called something that basically implies this is what skin looks like because skin looks like a lot of things. Anyway, um, another thing here is that just this palette looks like the duller cousin of Colourpop's Elsa palette. Sorry. Next up, Hufflepuff. The shade names here are Sherbert, Sunset, Lumos, Golden Snitch, Galleon, Earth, Honest, Rust, and Burrow. Honesty is one of Hufflepuff's attributes, so that fits nicely. I guess Earth kind of fits because Professor Sprout did teach herbology. The other shades though, Sunset and Rust are generic names even if we're not talking about a palette that's supposed to have a theme. And I'm guessing that Sherbert was meant to be a reference to the candy that Dumbledore really likes, but those are called Sherbet Lemons. There's no R there, which means Ulta has two different eyeshadow shades with an extra R thrown in that make it not actually fit with what they were trying to reference. Ulta, please get a spell checker or something. Make sure you're actually getting the names right. Lumos makes sense as the kind of color that it is, but I think it would have made a lot more sense to make Lumos a highlighter because it's a spell that makes light, and Lumos isn't a Hufflepuff-specific spell, so it doesn't really fit here anyway. I'm pretty sure they just took shades that were yellow and brown and then put them in here, and they didn't really care if the names were relevant to Hufflepuff, because Burrow is, you know, the name of the Weasley home, but none of the Weasleys are Hufflepuffs. So maybe the original plan was to, you know, do an overall Hogwarts palette because then names like Golden Snitch and Galleon and Pixie and Hedwig would fit very nicely. But instead they went with, oh, okay, Galleon is a, a yellow thing in Harry Potter, so we'll put it in the Yellow House's palette, even though Galleons are definitely not Hufflepuff specific. So I'm just frustrated. One more gripe here is that Hufflepuff's colors are yellow and black. This palette is yellow, brown, and a single gray. <laughs> I know it's hard to do a yellow and black palette without making people think of bumblebees, but they could have tried a little bit harder. Last, but certainly not least in their minds, Gryffindor. The shadows in this palette are called Peach, Autumn, Chocolate Frog, Pure, Passion, Howler, Mandrake, Chestnut, and Cocoa. There's one half-hearted gold and some overall reddish tones, making this the closest match to his house colors of the four, which is really sad. And to make things even better, this palette gets two mad beiges, so it's extra special. <laughs> Ugh. Right away, Peach, Autumn, Chestnut, and Cocoa don't seem like they fit very well, 
At first, I thought maybe some notable Gryffindor had a chestnut wand, but then I checked the Harry Potter wiki, which considers anything and everything to be relevant and necessary for inclusion. Seriously, it's kind of a mess. And that only has Peter Pettigrew and some guy from the mobile game as having chestnut wands, so that doesn't really make sense. Pure and Passion are probably trying to refer to Gryffindor traits, even though if you ask somebody to name the characteristics of Gryffindor, I'm pretty sure they would say courage, bravery, chivalry, or several other things before they would say pure and passion, so that's a little bit strange. And we see the return of Howler as a shade name, and once again, it is not the intimidating red that Howlers actually are. Chocolate Frog is at least name accurate, because it is a chocolate brown, but it would do better in a regular Hogwarts or overall Harry Potter palette than like a Gryffindor specific one. Mandrake. Mandrake. Um, so why is a shade named after a plant this weird pink color? In Harry Potter, the mandrakes are weird little root people and in real life the plant has light purple flowers. So the only thing I could think of for naming that color mandrake is that if someone of approximately my skin tone was holding a mandrake and it like bit my finger, then my finger might turn that color of pink? But that seems like a really stupid reason to name that shade mandrake, so I just have no idea why they did that. If you watched my video about the Black Widow collection, you probably remember that I made my own version of what that palette could have been. Well, I was so annoyed with this collection that I did that again. <laughs> Instead of trying to edit together a picture of what the palettes would look like, I decided to swatch some eyeshadows that I have and use those as references. Honestly, the existing packaging is almost the way I would want it anyway, but Hufflepuff's design needs to be in black. If the Slytherin and Ravenclaw ones are indeed silver, they can stay that way, even though the books say Ravenclaw should have been bronze. But it's fine, I'll allow it. Before I start getting into my version of the shadows, I also found lip gloss shades to make more sense for Howler and Platform 9 3 quarters. Howler is a bold red, and Platform 9 3 quarters is more of like a brick type brown. It really wasn't that hard, and the names made it pretty easy to find shades that worked. Instead of picking out 9 shades for each house, which honestly just seems excessive, I kept things a bit more simple and made quads. For Hufflepuff, I chose two yellows and two grayish shades. I thought our true black might be kind of difficult to use with these yellows, so I settled for a dark gray that can still deepen the look without having such a stark contrast to it. The shade names I chose are Group Hug, Loyalty, Champion, and Fat Fryer. Loyalty and Fat Fryer are self-explanatory names, I think, with the shade for Fat Fryer being a neat ghostly kind of shimmer to represent the ghost. Group Hug is because Hufflepuffs are such a friendly, welcoming, inclusive bunch, and Champion is in honor of Cedric Diggory. My Gryffindor quad has shades named Weasley, Transfiguration, Protagonists, and Courage. Weasley seemed like an obvious name choice, given that the Weasleys are all Gryffindors and they have red hair. I chose protagonists because the main heroes of the book are Gryffindors, and because Gryffindors in general seem to view themselves as protagonists and heroes overall. Transfiguration and Courage are because Professor Brigoggle taught Transfiguration, and Courage is one of Gryffindor's main characteristics. The Slytherin Quad is what I used on my eyes today, and I renamed these shades Dungeons, Ambition, Brooved Glory, and Basilisk. The Slytherin common room is in the dungeons of Hogwarts. Ambition is one of Slytherin's main traits. Rude glory is something that Snape once mentioned and definitely something that Slytherins would love to have. And good old Salazar himself put a giant basilisk in the castle full of teenagers. Finally, Ravenclaw. I have here Grey Lady, Wit Beyond Measure, Diadem, and New Quill. I know I already have a silvery shade named for a different ghost in the Hufflepuff palette, but this one's more of a bluey gray silver, so I thought it would be all right. Diadem is a lovely sapphire named for the sapphire in Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem. Wit Beyond Measure comes from Ravenclaw's motto, and New Quill is a shade name because if you've ever heard one of your Ravenclaw-minded friends talk about this new pen they got, then you can understand why a Ravenclaw student would probably be excited about a New Quill. So, in summary, I would get rid of those palettes and replace them with the quads that I just showed you, fix the colors of the two lip glosses that I mentioned, make a highlighter called Lumos, have Amortentia be either a blush or a mother of pearl lip gloss shade, and have the Deathly Hallows be represented by a brush, a compact, and a makeup eraser cloth. It's been a long time since I read the books or watched the movies, and I've been meaning to fix that, but I think the changes that I made would make this collection fit the theme a lot better, and I hope you agree with that. Thanks for listening to me vent about all the things that I think Ulta did wrong again. Let me know what you think about this stuff, and if there's anything else you want me to talk about. Be safe, wear a mask in public, and be kind to people.